In this video, we're going to talk about the rational zero test. And before I get to that, let's talk about what a rational number is. We're going to need to know what that is in order to understand this definition. A rational number is any number, any real number, that can be written in the form, we, see, we generally say p over q, where p and q are both integers. Another kind of more common way to think about a rational number is it's any fraction or decimal or integer. Um, I have to be careful there. Uh, any normal fraction, let's say. So not like 1.73 over pi. That's not a normal fraction. Just you know, a normal fraction that we're kind of used to. Um, and then the decimal does need to be a standard repeating or terminating decimal. Okay, so that's rational number. Let's move on. Here's the definition. If the polynomial f of x, so f of x, our generic polynomial, we say a sub n times x to the n. Remember that that just means uh, a sub n is the leading coefficient and x sub n, uh, x to the n is the largest, n is the largest exponent, plus a sub n minus 1, that's the coefficient of the second term, times x to the n minus 1, plus blah, 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 plus a sub 2 x squared, plus a sub 1 x, times, uh, plus a sub 0. All right, so if that polynomial f of x has integer coefficients, meaning that all of the a subs, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, a sub 2, a sub 1, a sub, uh, a sub 0, those should all be integer coefficients. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the negatives of those, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So coefficients should be integers. Then every rational 0 of f, so if f, the function f, has any rational zeros, they would all have to be of the form p over q. And let's define what p over q means in this case. So where p and q have no common factors besides 1, but also p is any factor of the constant term a sub 0, and q is any factor of the leading coefficient a sub n. So that just tells us if there are any rational roots, those are the only possibilities. So we have infinitely many numbers. We're going to whittle it down to the select few of the form p over q. That doesn't guarantee that they are all going to be zeros. Those are just the only possible rational roots. OK? Let's just te test this out, do some examples here. We're going to list all the possible rational zeros. Here we have f of x equals x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6. So in this case, p would be, well, I can't say p, um, a sub 0, that would be accurate, would be 6. And a sub n would be the leading coefficient, which is 1. What we want to do is we want to list all of the factors, and here's where it can get a little bit um, uncommon, is that not only do we list the positive factors, we also list the negative factors. There are a lot of different ways that you can write it. You can write them all out. You can use little positive negative signs. You can use one positive negative sign. You should talk to your professor about what, what his or her preference is. So the factors of 6, so my p values, will be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. These are all of the factors of 6. The factors of 1, that would be my q. We only have positive and negative 1. So the way we determine the list of possible rational zeros is we take each p and divide it by each q. And what you can do is you can just, as I mentioned, you can, you can separate the positives and negatives. You can com combine them. You can just put 1 plus or minus in front. Talk to your professor, see what they want you to do. OK, but our rational zeros, so our possible, I'm going to put possible rational zeros, does not look like an apostrophe, will be, so it's going to be positive or negative 1 divided by positive or negative 1. So we have plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1 will be plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1 will be plus or minus 3. And plus or minus 6 divided by plus or minus 1 will be plus or minus 6. So we have a total of eight possible rational zeros. And there's our list. Okay, let's try it again with letter B. So letter B, we have 2x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 8x squared minus x minus 8. In this case, a sub 0 is negative 8 and a sub n is 2. So the possible p values here will be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, 
10 plus or minus 8. The possible Q values are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So for the list, I'm going to try to squish it in at the bottom. Remember, we only have to look at the P's and Q's that have uh, no common factors besides 1. So we don't have to look at 2 and 2 because they have a common factor besides 1. They have a common factor of 2. We take each P and we uh, put it as a fraction over each Q. So positive or negative 1 divided by positive or negative 1 will be positive or negative 1. Then we're going to take our plus or minus 1 and divide it by plus or minus 2. So that would be 1 half. Now we're going to look at 2. So plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1 will be plus or minus 2. This one we can skip. We're going to go to 4. 4, positive or negative 4 divided by positive or negative 1 will be positive or negative 4. We can skip the 4 and 2 because they have a common factor besides uh, 1. And let's go to 8. Positive or negative 8 divided by positive or negative 1 will be positive or negative 8. We can skip that as well. So this one has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 possible rational zeros. 